Welcome back to the Common Application. Let's complete our application for the University of Oregon. Before I log into Common App, I want to make a note that I have once again gathered all the information that I know I'm going to need in order to successfully complete this application. And for the University of Oregon, that means that I have pulled up my It's a Plan College workbook where I have information about my residency to show that I have lived in Oregon long enough to access in-state tuition. And I know that there is a short answer prompt that I need to have an answer to, so I've written that response and I'll just need to copy and paste it into the application when the time comes to do that. So let's get started. The first page that shows up is my dashboard. It has a list of all of the colleges and universities that I plan to apply to using the Common Application. And it shows what my progress is in completing those applications. So for example, some of my applications are still in progress and some have already been submitted. When I scroll down to the University of Oregon, that's one that's in progress. I can show more details and it tells me what exactly I still need to do in order to complete my application. I can see here that the common application or that section where the questions that are being asked, the answers go to all of the colleges and universities is complete. Um, this green check mark as well as the word complete tells me so. Uh, but the purple pencil tells me that I still have some editing to do and so I'm going to go ahead and click on questions and it'll take me to the page where I can begin answering those questions. And on the left hand side, it looks just as it did before with a menu of header options for information that I'm going to need to be completing as I go through the supplement for the University of Oregon. Now, these questions are being asked by the U of O and my responses are only going to go back to the University of Oregon. It is possible that some of the questions in this supplement look similar or even identical to questions in other supplements. That's okay, you're gonna answer them more than once um, because again, these responses are going to go only to the university whose supplement I'm working on right now and I can know which one I'm working on by the um, blue highlighting to the left. So let's go ahead and get started. The first question they're asking is when I plan to enroll. And as you know, I'm graduating in the spring of 2021 and plan to start college in the fall after that. And the admission plan is about what type of application am I submitting. So I have two decisions, two types here regular decision and early action. Early action is a non-binding early application. So I submit my application early and I hear back early, but I still have until the spring to make my final decision about where I'll attend college. Regular decision is a later application deadline. I will find out later if I've been admitted probably in March-ish. Uh, and then I will have until the spring to make my final decision about where to attend. For me, regular decision is the right choice. You may have a different idea. Choose the one that's right for you. Now, we've already answered some questions about testing, so SAT or an ACT scores, and we talked about this as we were filling out our application, the common part of the application, and we already made a decision that we plan to be test optional and not share our test scores. Um, but the University of Oregon is asking us to confirm that. And in part, they're asking us to confirm that because if they have test scores, they want to know whether or not they should look at them or not. So yes means I want to be test optional, um, no scores being looked at. No would mean, no, please do look at my scores. This next question is about um, applying to the College of Design. I am not applying to the College of Design, so I'm going to leave this blank. If you are applying to the College of Design, you'll want to choose that yes, you are submitting this required information, and then you'll want to follow up and submit that information. This box is asking if when I filled out the activities section of the common application, did I choose at least three activities or accomplishments? I did, so I'm going to go ahead and click the box there. If I didn't, I would want to go back to that section of the common application and I could do that 
by scrolling up to the menu option, choosing Common App, and finding the Activities section in the left-hand menu. And then I would want to make sure that I had at least three activities there. The University of Oregon wants to know if I had any help um, in preparing my application or if I participated in the activities that might help me with that. And so there is a whole list of options here of different things that uh, you may have participated in in order to receive assistance with your application. So if any of these apply to you, so for example, if you have an Aspire mentor or you're in an AVID class, um, those would be really common reasons or ways that you would get help, College Possible or Gear Up. If you participate in any of those, make sure that you are clicking those options and adding them there. And you can choose more than one. So for example, I could choose Aspire and Avid both if those were true for me. Uh, this next section is asking, is it okay for the college to contact me using my cell phone? Can they text me or have an automatic phone call to me? And that is generally going to be used for reminders or interesting information that I may need to have about the college. And so I'm going to go ahead and say yes and share my phone number here. Okay. This question, have I previously applied to the University of Oregon? They want to know how much contact have I had with the university before, and if I have applied, they want to be able to connect my applications together so they have a full picture of who I am. So if I had previously applied and I chose yes, they would want some more information about when I submitted that application. Um, I did not, and so I'm going to say no to that answer, but if you have, you'll need to know the dates for that and enter those there and they're interested in knowing if I've ever previously attended the university. For me, the answer is no. Again, if I were to click yes, additional questions would come up asking when that was. But for me, no, so we continue. Now they're interested in knowing what I might be interested in studying, and I am being asked first to choose a major, or I can choose that I'm not quite sure yet by choosing undecided. Uh, they're making a note here that there are some ma majors that have an asterisk or a star next to them, and that means that there are additional things that I need to do and to, to be admitted into those programs, and so um, I need to work with the department to complete those requirements. I am going to choose undecided because I am not yet sure what I want to study and I'd like to explore a little bit before I make a decision. Uh, but if you know what you'd like to study, you can go ahead and choose that. And then they're interested in, as an optional question, what I might be interested in doing when I am out of school as a career. And for me, I think that possibly I might be interested in social work and so I'm going to choose that. This is not telling them something that I have to do. This is just, this is right now where my head's at and what I'm thinking I might like to do. This next question is about what language my schooling has been in. And for me, that's been English. And so this question is, has it been, has my schooling been done in a language other than English? And the answer is no, because it has been done in English. And I click continue. And now I have the option to upload some additional essays. So they are going to receive my Common App essay that I already have uploaded, but this is an additional one specifically for the University of Oregon. And they give me two different choices for what I would like to write about. And of course, this is optional, but I'm going to go ahead and answer it. And in fact, I've already written the response and I just need to go over and pull that, copy the text and then paste it into this box and I have completed that section. And then there's another section for an opportunity to upload information if there's something in my application that I want to provide additional information about. So there's a number of different things where that might be the case and this is just a box giving me the option to share information about that. So if you have additional information you'll want to include that there and click continue. This next section is all about residency. So this is the section 
that I need to complete in order to show that I am eligible for in-state tuition and I'm going to answer some of these questions. It is entirely possible that I don't know the answers to all of these questions by memory and that's okay. It's why I have my It's a Plan College workbook ready to go back to to look for the answer. So the first question, I'll want to read through all of these uh, pieces beforehand and then begin answering the questions. And the first question is, do I consider myself a resident of Oregon? And the answer is yes. I am a US citizen or permanent resident. And I do live in Oregon. And they want to know, how long have I lived in Oregon? And for me, I was born in the state. And so I'm going to, so I know that and I'm going to enter the my birth month here. Um, if you moved to Oregon after you were born, um, you'll just want to enter the date that you moved to the state. And I still live here, so that is to now. And I have not entered military service, so I'm going to say no, but if you have, there's going to be some additional questions about the dates for that. Your goal is to be honest and as complete in your answers as possible. So for me, the answer is no. And yes, one of my parents has claimed me as a dependent in the prior tax year, and they have provided at least half of my support during that time. These questions are going to indicate then that I need to provide some information about my parents for uh, purposes of identifying that I am an Oregon resident. And so I'm going to provide that information about a parent of mine, and you'll choose whether it's your step parent or legal guardian. And they want to know those that person's name. Mine is my mother, last name first, and then first name, and they want her phone number. Okay, and her email address. and the legal state of her residence. And of course, that is Oregon. And she did not enter the military. But again, if we clicked yes, it would ask for some information about that. Now there's some information that they are looking for uh, because the state has asked them to capture this information. The first one is whether or not English is my first language. And then there, we've already answered questions about race and ethnicity on the common application form. Um, again, that was optional, so if we've answered it, it's already been done, but they're looking to know whether or not we consider ourselves multiracial or multi-ethnic, so you'll choose yes or no for that. And again, more optional questions that we are not required to answer, but they are asking them. The first one is about your sexual identity or sexual orientation, and you can choose to answer that question or not. You can either leave it blank, answer it, or answer it with prefer not to answer. So you can choose any of those options. And the same is true here for gender or gender identity. You can choose to answer the question, not answer the question, or choose to the answer of prefer not to answer. So any of those are valid options. And then they're looking to know whether or not I've been in foster care at any time between the ages of 14 and 21. Um, the reason they're asking this question is because if you answer yes, you may be eligible for some additional financial aid and they want to make sure that they get you information about that. And so for me, the answer is no, and I will continue. This next section is about the Honors College. If you are planning to apply to the Honors College, you will have additional things that you need to do. So let's see what that looks like. Now you have some an essay question that you need to answer, um, choosing one of these three. If you're applying for the Honors College, it would be in your best interest to know these questions and write them just as we did for the short answer earlier. Write them, have them ready to go, copy and paste here. I will not be applying for the Honors College and as a result don't have that additional essay to do. And we can go ahead and click continue. Now we're going to talk about the recommendation and FERPA section. FERPA stands for the Federal Educational Rights and Privacy Act. 
This is an interesting part of the common application because it's in the supplement section, but when you start any of your supplements, this information does get pulled into your supplements for other colleges and universities. So some of these things you only need to do one time and then it will be completed for all of your supplements. That's true of the FERPA release authorization. Um, so I've already worked on those and that means it's already complete, but we can see what it looks like. So if you haven't yet seen this, um, we can walk through it so you can see what you need to do here. The FERPA release authorization is all about how we get information from your high schools to the colleges that you're applying to. So this is you giving permission for your high schools to submit your transcripts or other academic records and your recommendation letters to the colleges so that they can review your application. So this is you giving permission for that and there are instructions here that it's really important that you read through and understand. Once you have done so, you'll click a box here that says that you have read and understand these and you will want to make sure especially to understand this second section here because the next thing you'll do is answer some questions related to this. You will have the opportunity to decide whether you want your recommendation letters to be something that you will get to see in the future or never get to see and this information provides some good advice about how to make that decision and so you'll want to read it carefully think about that and make the decision you're then going to acknowledge that uh, once you sign this you are giving permission for every high school or any college that you've already attended to share records with the colleges you're applying to and permission for the colleges you're applying to to get information from those schools that you've attended then you're going to make the decision about whether or not you're going to um, waive the rights to see your recommendation letters. And then you're going to acknowledge that you understand once you've made this decision, you have a short window of time to change your mind. And that window ends when you've either submitted an application or somebody has submitted a recommendation on your behalf. Once those things have happened, you can't change your mind about this. It's a done deal. So you'll notice that I've already submitted an application and I am no longer allowed to edit this section. Once you have clicked all of the appropriate boxes, you'll sign your name, provide a date and say, okay. Now you uh, move on to the recommendation section. The very first time that you complete a supplement, they will ask you who your high school counselor is and enter that person's information here and you will never have to enter that again. And so I entered that information by providing first and last name and an email address. And then I have the option to provide teacher recommendations. So at the University of Oregon, I am not required to provide a letter of recommendation from a teacher, but I am allowed to provide up to two if I want to. And because some of my previous applications did require them, I've already asked those people to recommend to write those letters. And I have already, they're already in the system. And I can choose them, choose their name and assign them to write a letter of recommendation for me. I could choose a second one if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it with just the one. Uh, if I wanted to invite a different teacher that I have not yet asked to write a letter, I would click on this button and I would provide their email address, the subject that they teach me, and their first and last name and whether or not I want them to complete an evaluation for the University of Oregon. When I click invite, Common Application sends them an email to, to invite invite them to complete that application for, or that recommendation letter for me. The University of Oregon also allows me to invite a college access counselor, if I have one, to submit an application on my behalf. And if I wanted to do that, I would click invite other recommender and it would look just like the teacher one, email address, who they are to me, and I would choose a college access counselor because that's what the University of Oregon allows. 
and then their first and last name. And I would add them. And again, they would get that email inviting them to participate in this. And then the last thing on this page is that if I have somebody who I don't want to submit any information on my behalf, um, but I do want them to have access to my application so that they can review it and give me advice about it, I could choose to invite an advisor. And if I clicked on this, it would pop up a box that shows all the same information that I need to provide there, invite them, they would get that email as well. So once I've completed all of this and I've asked everyone that I want to recommend me, I can click continue and I come to the submission page. So I am ready to submit my application. I will first review the application. Then if there's an application fee that I need to pay and it hasn't been waived, I will do that. And then I will submit my application. So first is the review and up pops a PDF and this is kind of small. So if I want to see it larger, I can click the review PDF and it will come up bigger. Um, but my goal here is to read through my application and make sure that everything is correct and accurate. That there's no typos. It's all edited exactly the way that I want it to be. And so I'm going to go through the entire application and check to make sure that that's true. If I find a mistake, I can click out of here and go back up and make the changes within the application and then come back to this section. Once I've reviewed everything and know that it's correct, I'll click a box saying that that is true and continue. Now I have indicated earlier in the application that I plan to use a fee waiver and so I don't need to make a payment, but if you do, there will be a button to take you to a third party website where you'll enter some credit card information to pay that application and then you'll need to come back to this page, click continue and sign your name. The first thing that you're going to do is make sure that you read each of these statements, read them, make sure you understand them, agree to them and click the box. So you're going to do that for each read, understand, agree and click the box for each of these. And then you're going to sign with your legal name. date and click submit. And once you click submit, you have applied to the University of Oregon. Congratulations.